When a piece of paper burns, it is difficult to imagine this chemical reaction running in the reverse direction. To combine the smoke and ashes, and reform the cellulose molecules of which the paper is made. We are generally familiar with reactions that are spontaneous, that tend to move in the forward direction from reactants to products. But we know from our study of kinetics that chemical reactions involve molecular collisions. At the start of a reaction, there are only reactant molecules, with products formed from successful collisions of these reactant molecules. As the reaction proceeds, and more product molecules are formed, product collisions can occur. If these collisions are thermodynamically favorable, some of the product collisions can result in the stable formation of reactants, meaning the reverse reaction occurs, which we show with the double-sided arrow. The frequency and effectiveness of the forward and reverse reactions are reflected in the reaction rates. Equilibrium implies balance. A chemical system reaches equilibrium when the rate of the forward reaction balances or is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. In this video, we'll define equilibrium further, examine the equilibrium expression, and learn to use the equilibrium constant K to understand how much a chemical reaction proceeds in the forward or reverse direction. It is important to understand that equilibrium is a dynamic condition. Atoms and molecules are always moving and therefore, they are always colliding. A great way to understand the concept of equilibrium is to examine a simple physical system in which a liquid, say methanol, acts in a closed container at a constant temperature. The methanol molecules are in the liquid phase as methanol is added and the container is closed. However, as the molecules move, some of them will achieve enough energy to escape the surface of the liquid and move into the gas phase above the liquid. As more methanol molecules vaporize, the vapor pressure increases, and the number of collisions above the surface of the liquid will increase as well. Some of the gas molecules will collide with liquid molecules, and, losing energy, will move back into the liquid phase. As this process proceeds, and if the system remains closed, the rate at which the liquid methanol molecules vaporize to the gas phase will equal the rate at which gaseous methanol molecules condense back into the liquid phase. The vaporization and condensation process never stops, but the number of molecules in the liquid and gas phases will remain constant. As we continue and begin to look at chemical reactions, remember that this dynamic equilibrium state does not mean that the number of reactant and product species are equal but rather it is the rates of the forward and reverse reactions that are the same. We can see the general concept of equilibrium and its characteristics by graphing changes in the concentration of reactants and products over the course of a chemical reaction. In this example, just as with many chemical reactions, the reaction will begin with only reactants present in our system. As the reaction proceeds, product molecules are formed increasing in number on our graph, while the reactant molecules are consumed, decreasing in number. In a product-favored reaction, we see the number of products surpasses the number of reactants. In a reactant-favored reaction, we see that although the number of reactants decreases, there are always more reactants than products in our system. At some point in either situation, the forward and reverse reaction rates become equal which we see when the concentration of reactants and products becomes constant. This acts as an indicator that equilibrium has been established. Note that as the two graphs indicate, at equilibrium, there could be a higher concentration of products or there could be a higher concentration of reactants. But once equilibrium is established, indicated by the dashed vertical line, concentrations of both reactants and products remain relatively constant. In order to model chemical systems in equilibrium, we'll need to understand the equilibrium expression, which can be derived from a balanced chemical equation. For example, given the chemical equation 2NO plus Cl2 makes 2NOCl, the expression for the equilibrium constant K takes the concentration of NOCl squared divided by the concentration of NO squared times the concentration of Cl2. In general terms, the expression for the equilibrium constant can be written for any balanced chemical equation in the following way, where lowercase a 
b, c, and d are the balancing coefficients, and uppercase a, b, c, and d are the formulas for the reactants and products, respectively. The amount, or concentration, of reactant and product is expressed in molarity, which we represent using square brackets. This equilibrium expression allows us to mathematically predict the reactant or product concentrations at equilibrium, or the value for a particular equilibrium constant given the equilibrium concentrations of the reactants and products. Any one value of an equilibrium constant for a given reaction is only valid at one particular temperature, i.e. the value of K is true at one constant temperature. Let's look at a few equilibrium expressions and their corresponding reactions. These will allow us to identify some important rules. First, recall that the square brackets tell us the concentration of each substance in molarity, which is measured in moles per decimeter cubed. Next, you'll notice that water is omitted in the second and third expressions. That's because water is a pure liquid. Concentration is something that is only measured in the context of a mixture or of a gas. Pure solids and liquids have fixed concentrations, meaning their concentrations don't change, so it doesn't make sense to describe the concentration of a substance that is pure. No matter how you choose to think of this, the rule is that pure solids and pure liquids are always omitted from the equilibrium expression. Only the aqueous and gas states are included. Thus, calcium carbonate in the third reaction is also omitted in the expression along with water. The numerical value of K for a given reaction at a given temperature tells us the extent to which the reaction proceeds from reactants to products. The values for the equilibrium constant K are always unitless, so in a very general sense, K reflects the ratio of product concentrations to reactant concentrations. Therefore, if the value of K is larger than 1, this indicates there are more product, shown in the numerator, than reactant, shown in the denominator. If k is less than 1, the denominator must be larger than the numerator, meaning there are more reactants than products. If k is equal to 1, then there are about equal concentrations of reactants and products at equilibrium. Let's see extremes of this visually, with particle representations of exaggerated k values. When k is small, meaning less than 10 to the negative third, we see a lot more reactants than products at equilibrium. A reactant-favored reaction will hardly proceed with very few products actually made. When K is large, shown as being greater than 10 to the third, we have a reaction that has nearly gone to completion, or the full production of products. A good example of this would be a combustion reaction, where nearly all of the reactants are consumed. Intermediate K values are somewhere between these two extreme conditions. Once the equilibrium constant value is known for a particular reaction at a particular temperature, the value of K can be manipulated as the original chemical equation is varied. For example, at 25 degrees Celsius, the production of hydrogen chloride from hydrogen gas and chlorine gas has an equilibrium constant, or K value, of 2.40 times 10 to the 33rd. Since K is much greater than 1, we say this reaction lies further to the right at equilibrium, meaning there are far more products than reactants. A reaction that is this product favored is often shown with a single, right pointing arrow. If the reaction is reversed, we can see that the equilibrium expression is flipped as a result. This means the value of K for the reversed reaction will be the reciprocal of the original value. Note that K is far less than 1, meaning that the equilibrium for the reverse reaction lies far to the left with far more reactants than products. In fact, there are many instances where we might manipulate K some of which are shown here. For example, you may see situations where you square the value of k after doubling the value of an equation's coefficients. Or, if you're adding two reactions together, the k value of the subsequent equation would be the product of the k values of the equations you were combining. In any case, the relationship between the reaction equation and the equilibrium constant expression will always provide the path for determining the effect on the value of k itself. In summary, equilibrium is a dynamic state in which the rates of the forward and reverse reactions are equal. We can see equilibrium using graphs that measure changes in concentration over time, where, at equilibrium, the concentration of reactants and products remains relatively constant.
We measure equilibrium using the equilibrium expression and the equilibrium constant, K. These allow us to mathematically predict the concentrations of reactants and products at equilibrium, as knowing the values of the equilibrium constant, K, at a particular temperature, informs us about the extent of a chemical reaction. We could manipulate the equilibrium constant to find its value for alternative equations, or change its value by altering the temperature of a reaction system. Equilibrium is more than just a concept in chemistry. It mirrors the intricate balance that we find in our everyday lives. Just as in chemical equilibrium with the forward and reverse reactions balance, life's equilibrium finds steadiness in adjusting to stress and change.